Franklin is known as one of America's many founding fathers, a legendary inventor, and the man who discovered electricity. But what many of us don't know about is his complicated relationship with his illegitimate son, William Franklin, and the conflicts and compromises that came with it. It all started in 1730 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, when William was born out of wedlock to Benjamin and a woman whose name who is unknown to historical records. At the time, Benjamin was in a common-law marriage with Deborah Reed, whom William regarded as a maternal figure. Even though he was considered illegitimate by many people, Deborah raised him as her own. William joined Benjamin in his endeavors as an inventor as soon as he was able, including when William was 21 years old when he helped his father with his famous lightning kite experiment. They also joined forces many times, both as allies and legal confidants. William and Ben also took pleasures on many various trips abroad. More specifically, one trip in particular made their relationship stronger and diverged its end. William and Ben left for London in 1757, William serving as Benjamin's secretary. Although Benjamin's main purpose of the trip was to consult the Penn family on behalf of the Pennsylvania Assembly about taxation on the land, he quickly was shot down and failed to get through to the family. In England, William had time to study law at the Inns of Court, a collection of four schools over London. Benjamin and William enjoyed their time in England much more than they thought they would. In fact, they were falling in love with the country. The pair took many trips to Wales and beyond. But the longer they spent there, the more they realized that the partnership that England and America once had was crumbling to pieces. And they both knew that they wanted to do something about it. But soon, Benjamin and William discovered that the ways they were planning on solving America and Britain's failing relationship was very different. With William's growing alliance to the royal crown, William wanted nothing more than for England and America to understand each other and work well together. But Benjamin thought the only solution to the preservation of both America and England was for a separation between them, and an uprising in the colonists. The two men returned from England in 1762 with knowledge, opportunity, and excitement to aid the preservation of a relationship between England and America. Over the next ten years, the two men respectfully disagreed, but nothing ever happened until the Hutchinson Oliver Papers which were released in 1773. Sheila L. Skemp, an expert on the topic, reports, uh, The letters were written in um, dur during the uh, Stamp Act crisis, and they were written privately, uh, and they expressed real disgust at the way that the colonists were acting. Um, they uh, were particularly upset because Hutchinson's house had been destroyed by the mob, and so uh, they were obviously uh, personally interested in this. And the letters were kept um, by uh, Mr. Whateley, who uh, held on to them for whatever reason people held on to them in those days, I think longer than they do now. And uh, at his death, uh, someone and we still don't know who found the letters and gave them to Benjamin Franklin. And he never divulged who gave him those letters. People have speculated forever, and I don't think we'll ever know. William was astonished at Benjamin for releasing these letters to the public. This was when Benjamin and William really started falling out. I think that that was kind of the beginning of the end, though I think that they were probably drifting apart 
politically even before then. But that was kind of like the the thing that that just totally set them on different paths. The writing in the letters that were released by Benjamin Franklin were very controversial in what they said. All of the people who would be patriots already disliked him. And so if they found out that he had been saying, you know, we're too democratic, you've got to crack down on these people, um, they, uh, you've got to maybe change the government and take away some of their rights. If they knew that he had written those kinds of letters, this would have uh, confirmed everything that they already believed and would have uh, made them uh, want to get rid of him, which is exactly what happened. In the end of this conflict, William was not happy with Benjamin. But Benjamin was also not happy with William. Benjamin requested that William stand down his position as governor. William was not very happy about this because that was the only job he'd had, and he took great pride in working with the British government. The two men talked less and less frequently as time went on, but they still remained in contact up until 1776 when William Franklin was arrested and put in jail for the majority of the war. There was no real reason that William was in jail, other than the fact that he supported the British government. William and Benjamin did not speak over the course of the war, but there were several reconciliation attempts made by William. Dear son, I received your letter on the 22nd past and am glad to find that you desire to revive the affectionate intercourse that formerly existed between us. It will be very agreeable to me. Indeed, nothing has ever hurt me more so much and affected me with such keen sensations. And as to find myself deserted in my old age by my only son, and not only deserted, but to find him taking up arms against me in a cause wherein my good fame, fortune, and life were all at stake. You conceived, you say, that your duty to your king and regard for your countries required this. I ought not to blame you for differing in sentiment with me in public affairs. We are all men, all subject to errors. Our opinions are not in our power. They are formed and governed much by circumstances that are often as inexplicable as they are irresistible. Your situation was such that few would have censored your remaining neuter. Though there are natural duties which precede political ones and cannot be extinguished by them. Benjamin and William Franklin have been making sacrifices their entire life to make up for their political disagreements. But with the conflict of William's arrest and the Hutchinson Oliver letters, the compromise was stretched too thin and broke. The compromise in this story comes, oddly enough, before the conflict. Ben and William's tale is almost backwards, where they have been fighting and sacrificing to keep their partnership alive, but in the end, the conflict was the simple disregard for their personal, non-political bonds that existed before. He basically said, if you'd been a loyalist but had kept your mouth shut and not actually acted uh, in such a public, uh, humiliating way, I could forgive you, but under the circumstances, I can never forgive you for what you've done. And as for how this affects us today, I suspect that if our modern-day politicians treated each other's opinions with the same respect that Ben and William did for each other, we would have a far better functioning system. Oh,